All right, back again for another deep dive. And this time, something for you Rogan fans out there. Mm. We're going deep on Trump, on Rogan. Just 11 days, by the way, before the 2020 election. Talk about pressure. You know it. I mean, imagine being in that room. It's got to be intense. Yeah. So uh, what are we hoping to get out of this deep dive? I mean, what's the what's the goal here? And I think for me, at least, this is like a time capsule. Yeah. You know, we get to hear Trump unfiltered, like really unfiltered on all sorts of things from his, you know, pre-politics life yeah. to aliens. It's classic Rogan, too, right? Oh, for sure. Long form. Yeah. Just letting the conversation go wherever, which with these two, who knows where that could lead? Right. Like, buckle up. right? Yeah, absolutely. So where do we uh, where do we even start with this? Well, right off the bat, Trump talks about this contrast like between his life before politics and, and being president. And yeah. he, he describes his life before as wonderful. But then he, he felt this pull to run, to jump into this, you know, crazy world. He actually uses the word compelled. It's almost like it was a calling. Yeah. And he even talks about uh, Oprah. Like he was on Oprah all the time. Right. I mean, before, uh, you know, before all the political stuff, he was like a celebrity businessman. Hanging out with Oprah. It's wild, right? And it makes you think, like, if things were so good, why go through all that? Why jump into, like, the political shark tank? And he was on The Apprentice. A huge hit. I mean, come on. that's uh, That's got to be a tough gig to walk away from. So there's something more there, right? Some motivation we got to figure out. Definitely. Then there's that whole thing about winning the election. Oh, yeah. And, and going to the White House for the first time. He describes it as surreal. Like, you can almost, I don't know, feel the awe in his voice. Totally especially when he talks about driving down Pennsylvania Avenue past his own hotel. Like, imagine uh -huh. that, going from owning a hotel to being, well, the most powerful person in the world. Talk about a story for the grandkids. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. And the the White House itself, he, he was expecting, like, metal doors and austerity, but he was blown away by how beautiful it was. He totally geeks out about the interior. And he talks about the Lincoln bedroom. Mm -hmm. And he sounds, I don't know, genuinely moved. Like the weight of history really hit him in that moment. It's powerful stuff. And then it's like, boom, back to reality. He starts talking about the challenges of, you know, actually governing. And he admits straight up that he has zero experience in government. Like none. And he had to rely on recommendations for who to appoint to, like key positions. Which can be a recipe for disaster. Well, he tells this story, right, mm -hmm. about this guy he hired who turned out to be, let's just say, a little off. And and someone had warned him about this guy. No way. But it was too late. He'd already made the appointment. It really highlights the the risks he was taking, appointing people with, like, no vetting, no political experience. That's a gamble. Huge gamble, especially right. for someone so new to the game. Right. So, okay, let's talk economy. All right, hit me. Trump says the, you know, the whole pre-pandemic boom, that was all him. All thanks to his policy. Tax cuts. Ah. And deregulation. Which he actually puts more emphasis on. The deregulation. Interesting. Very Trumpian. Less government, better economy. Pure Trump. And he claims, get this, he would have paid off the national debt. If not for COVID, right? Exactly. Bold claim. I mean, some economists might disagree, but yeah, got to love the confidence. And then we move on to the environment. Buckle up. Because Trump doesn't hold back. Not at all. He's skeptical of, well, pretty much any environmental regulation. He sees it all as hurting the economy. Classic clash, right? Business versus the environment. Yeah. And he's particularly fired up about China. He keeps saying that the U.S., we've got clean air and water. And it's China that's the real polluter. It's all tied into his America first thing. For sure. And he gets into tariffs, saying they're necessary to, you know, protect American industries. Yeah. Level the playing field. Especially with China. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, he mentions Elon Musk. Oh, yeah. He praises SpaceX and Starlink as, like, examples of American innovation. It's like he's saying, look what we can achieve when we're not bogged down by all this, you know, regulation. Pretty clear message. Okay. What else? Oh, right. Immigration mm. and border security. Another hot topic. Trump doesn't mince words. He, uh, he criticizes the Biden administration's approach specifically how they're handling the border. He's pretty harsh. And he brings up those familiar points about uh, the dangers of gangs like MS-13 and even accuses the Democrats of, well, basically supporting open borders. To get votes and cheap labor? Yeah, yeah. you know, 
classic campaign trail stuff, yeah. but it resonates with a lot of people. For sure. Especially yeah. those worried about, you know, border security. And of course, we can't talk about Trump without talking about election integrity. Can't avoid it. And he spends a lot of time in this interview talking about how the 2020 election was, quote, rigged. He even brings up, you know, specific examples. Yeah. Like the Hunter Biden laptop situation. Yeah. And, and changes to voting procedures in certain states. This is the stuff that, you know, really gets Rogan's audience going. Conspiracy theories alternative narratives he's particularly worried about mail-in ballots mm. and uh electronic voting machines he sees them as like vulnerabilities in the system and he's a big advocate for voter id mm -hmm. and citizenship verification he sees those as you know essential for uh making sure elections are fair and yeah. accurate it's a divisive issue for sure no doubt all right so then things take a turn a very Rogan-esque turn. You mean the aliens? The aliens. Rogan asks Trump about extraterrestrial life, and Trump, being Trump, says he knows a lot but can't share everything. Classic. It's like a cliffhanger. He gives you just enough to get you hooked, but then leaves you wanting more. He even mentions the incident with Commander David Fravor. The Navy pilot. Yeah. The one who encountered that, that strange object off yeah. the coast of San Diego. The one that was, like, captured on video. One of the most famous UFO sightings out there. And Rogan's audience loves this stuff. Trump doesn't actually say whether he thinks it was an alien spacecraft or not. But he acknowledges how weird it was. Yeah, and he just leaves it at that. Which, honestly, I think is brilliant. Totally. It's that that open-endedness. It's what makes Rogan sh so, you know, compelling. It lets the audience be a part of it to draw their own conclusions. It's so different from, you know, traditional media. Mm -hmm. Where they tell you what to think. Rogan's all about sparking that curiosity. Yeah. Making you question things. And Trump, with his, you know, cryptic comments and his whole persona, he's he's the perfect guest for that. It's a wild ride. And we're just getting started. There's so much more to unpack from this interview. We've only scratched the surface. But we'll have to save that for next time. Stay tuned. <laughs> so we left off with Trump hinting about aliens. But then he kind of pivots back to politics, talking about his vision for a second term. Mm -hmm. And what surprised me was how much he focused on, like, de-escalation, especially with China and Russia. It's almost like he's trying to paint himself as this this master negotiator, someone and who can, you know, smooth things over on the world stage, get those big wins for America. And he uses that example of putting tariffs on French goods to get Macron to back down from, you know, taxing American companies. Classic Trump move. Bold aggressive and in his view effective it's that business mentality right yeah. applied to international relations whether you agree with it or not the guy is confident it works he spends a lot of time criticizing biden's foreign policy too saying that biden doesn't get respect on the world stage and that makes america look weak to like china and russia and that plays into this fear that some people have right that america is losing its power it's standing in the world he really goes after the afghanistan withdrawal calls it a total disaster, and brings up those images of the Taliban parading around with American military equipment. It's the powerful image, and it definitely stuck with people, made them question, you know, who's really in control? Are America's interests being protected? And he's brutal when it comes to General Milley. Calls him stupid and unwise for leaving behind, like, billions of dollars worth of equipment. No mincing words there. Classic Trump. And then he talks about these, like, real generals he met with in Iraq. The tough guys. The action movie heroes. It fits his narrative, right? Yeah. The strong, competent leader versus the the bumbling bureaucrat. He talks a lot about his efforts to rebuild the military and uh, emphasizes the importance of nuclear power as a deterrent. He even mentions his uncle, Dr. John Trump, who was a uh, nuclear physicist and how he warned him about the threat of nuclear weapons. It's interesting, right, because it shows that underneath all the bluster, there's this awareness of the, the stakes involved in international relations. I mean, we're talking about nuclear war here. Then he gets into Space Force, which, yeah. you know, was pretty controversial. But for Trump, it's all about, you know, dominance in space. He sees it as the next frontier, the next battleground. That forward-thinking vision is something that appeals to people, you know, always looking ahead to what's next. And then... Just when you think the conversation can't get any more, uh, Rogan asks. The aliens come back. Rogan asks how much he was told about extraterrestrial life. And Trump says, a lot. It's like he's teasing us, dangling this, this secret knowledge in front of us. Makes you want to hear more. He mentions talking to people who all agree that there's something there when it comes to UFOs. It's like he knows something we don't. And then he brings up the Commander Fravor incident again. 
the Navy pilot who saw that weird thing off the coast of San Diego, the one that was caught on video, you know? Yeah, yeah. Trump doesn't say whether he believes it was an alien spacecraft or not, but he acknowledges how strange the whole thing was. And he just kind of leaves it hanging out there. It's that open-endedness that, that keeps you coming back for more. With Rogan, you're never quite sure what's going to happen next or what you're supposed to think. It's different from traditional media, that's for sure. Absolutely. And Trump, with his cryptic comments and his you know larger-than-life personality, he's, he's perfect for that kind of show. Oh, yeah. It's a wild ride. And we're not done yet. There's still more to unpack from this uh, mind-blowing interview. We've covered a lot of ground, but we've only, you know, scratched the surface. There are still those big questions about, you know, Trump's health, his vision for America, and those persistent claims of election fraud. All that and more when we come back. Okay, so final stretch here. We've talked aliens, Afghanistan, but there's still a lot to get through with this Trump-Rogan interview. Right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Still plenty to unpack. So Rogan being Rogan, he can't let Trump go without asking about his health. Right. Like, how does he stay so, you know, energetic? And Trump, being Trump, credits good genes in golf. Of course he does. He even brings up his dad, who lived a long life. Yeah, longevity runs in the family. But he does admit that the golf helps. Keeps him moving, out in the fresh air. He's back active. And it's clear he takes his golf pretty seriously. He, uh, he brags about winning 32 club championships. Wow. That's that's impressive. It's that competitive spirit, right? He has to be the best, even on the golf course. Makes sense. Always striving for that win. He tells a story about playing with um, Bryson DeChambeau. Oh, the, the mad scientist of golf. Exactly. The guy who's obsessed with, like, the science of the game. Right. Which, honestly, I think is kind of a perfect pairing. Trump, the dealmaker. And DeChambeau, the data-driven golfer. It's all about pushing the limits, finding that edge. For sure. But then the conversation takes a more serious turn, and Trump starts talking about his vision for America. What's he got planned? Well, one of his big things is um, bringing back manufacturing jobs. He really rails against companies that move production overseas. Outsourcing. Yeah. And he's all about using tariffs. Yeah to, you know, encourage companies to make things here in America. That America first mentality. Exactly. He wants to see those factories back up and running, those jobs coming back. And it's a message that resonates, yeah. you know, especially with people who feel like they've been left behind by globalization. Absolutely. He's also big on energy independence. He's all about domestic oil and gas production, which he calls liquid gold. So a bit at odds with the, you know, push for renewable energy. Oh, yeah. But for Trump, it's about strength. Self-sufficiency. He doesn't want to rely on other countries for, you know, America's energy. It's a consistent theme for him. And then we can't forget about election integrity. It comes up a lot in this interview. Yeah. And Trump makes it very clear that he believes the 2020 election was, well, stolen from him. He doubles down on that. Yeah. He keeps talking about those vulnerabilities with mail-in ballots and electronic voting machines. A message that really resonates with his base, a lot of people who feel like the system is you know, rigged. And he's a big advocate for voter ID and other measures he believes will, you know, secure elections. It's an issue that, that continues to divide us and we'll likely be hearing about it for a long time to come. So, I mean, what do we make of all this? What are your final thoughts? Well, this interview, it's a fascinating glimpse into, like, the mind of a former president who's still a major force in American politics. Whether you love him or hate him, you can't deny he knows how to connect with people, tap into those you know, fears and hopes. And it shows how powerful podcasts can be. They allow for these, these really long conversations that you just don't get on TV. And with two big personalities like Rogan and Trump, who are both willing to you know, push the envelope, it's definitely a unique experience. For sure, it's entertaining. It's thought provoking. Right. And it makes you, you know, question things, your own beliefs, what you value, what you want for the future. Exactly. And that's what we hope we've achieved with this deep dive to give you some things to think about, maybe even spark some, you know, interesting conversations of your own. So until next time, keep those minds open and keep exploring those different perspectives. We'll be back soon with another deep dive.